You were in Kiev, and you came here in 94, is that right? right. Yes. Yes. And was it easy for you to leave the Ukraine? Well, at that time, it was much easier than, I would say, for Baryshnikov or Makarova in the 70s. It was definitely uh, so much easier. It was, for me, it was painful because I had to leave when my mom passed away. And um, it, it was a lot into it. And uh, I said it was easier to leave, but then when you're in the process of living and when you, when you have to leave your, your friends, your, your environment, your theater, your company, your apartment, and when it comes to this moment, then it's not easy. So, um, but we had agenda, and we're just, both of us very exactly. strong character, yeah. and we're very determined if we want to achieve something, so we're going to go through everything. Mm -hmm. So I think this gives us the push for the new start and uh, for the new life. But you have a young girl who's growing up and it's hard as a parent to decide, do I push my child towards this? Exactly. Do I not push my child yeah. so they can it have also, more freedom? It's also the, the, the decision of the child and you need to sense it. If the child is just doing it for fun or it's a very serious issue, mm -hmm. because one thing you wanted to do, another thing, if you're able to do it and pursue this, yes. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of uh, determination and discipline and you need to focus yourself and so it's hard. It's one of the hardest job in the world to be a ballet dancer. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be crazy enough to continue to do what you do year after year. And simply because me and Irina succeed and our daughter is blessed with, well for now I see the physique and, and of course, I see the, the, the talent the and the character. That she wants to be a center of attention, but I wouldn't push her to pursue this career just because we succeed. Mm -hmm. I this really should be her choice. What's her choice? What she wants to do? Because I had an example of married people in the ballet world, and they have a child, and of just course it's easy man. because you mm -hmm. already went through everything and you will help your child you have a connection you will make a life for her easier but if it's something inside it's not her then it's a misery mm -hmm. it's hard so, so let's talk about the discipline it takes to be a ballet dancer i mean this is gonna sound like a silly question but are you happy being ballet dancers well i think that's what we wanted for since we were children it, it is inc it's incredible adrenaline and the moments of happiness when you uh, finish performance and you are center of attention and 3,000 people applauding you and standing ovation and screaming and you feel that you, mo you did something special, something incredible, that you brought so much happiness and joy to the audience and you know our life is a basically glimpse of happiness. Mm -hmm. It's a moment. You cannot describe happiness like 24-7. It's a moment which make you happy and exciting and smile and laugh or cry to feel any sort of emotion so and it's our duty to bring this uh, to the world and if you are able if you have enough strength and power to share this with other people so I think that you are doing something wonderful in this life because everybody had problems, difficulties jobs this that and if they could escape for several hours and enjoy what we're doing and share with us the story ballet and experience some emotions it is wonderful that you, it's our the gift what we could share with the people and it, it's tremendous and, and is that a weight on your shoulders ever that you have a duty to do this no 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 it, it's 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 your feeling your desire mm -hmm. you know when both of us are very very emotional and for for if for a long time for two months for example we don't have stage we just rehearse and something you feel like you're a tiger in a cage mm -hmm. You have so much inside that you want to bring it out mm -hmm. and empty yourself for, to fulfill others. Mm -hmm. So I think it's it's like a drug, I think. <laughs> yes. So you really want it. And rehearsal and preparation process is extremely difficult. And sometimes we suffer from the pain and it's a lot of problems because it's not easy to pull the three-act ballet together, especially when it's a new ballet, because you're learning each time new language. New choreography, it's a new language. Of course, you want to already move fluently and beautiful and easy, but it doesn't come that easy as it looks like. Yes. So you need to learn the base, which is language of the new choreographer that we're preparing, for example. And then you need to find yourself in this ballet. So 
first you learn the steps and try to your, for your body to feel it and make it look fluent and natural. Then on the top of it, we need to work with the chemistry, two of us. So it's not like I'm dancing with a stranger. Usually the ballet is a love story, so you need to find the right connection, right feeling. And then on the top of it, you need to find emotional level of the performance in order to uh, transfer it and bring it on stage. So you just finished doing Romeo and Juliet a little while ago, yeah, with Peter Bowles? Um, Roberto Bolle. Roberto Bolles, that's right, yes. And I read a lot about that emotional connection and dancing. Yeah. Like that. Uh, that was very interesting, I thought. So take me through um, the steps. You are the principal dancers at the American Ballet. Who comes to you with your next show? Do they just tell you, we want you to do this, or do you choose? How does that work? Well, right now we're in a position that we are talking with our artistic director, Kevin McKenzie. Uh, who is already um, with American Ballet Theater uh, as a director since uh, 1993. And uh, we're in a position right now that we're talking and negotiating. Some ballets he's proposing to us, he sees us in this ballet, and sometimes we don't see ourselves in this ballet. So, and sometimes you wanted to do desperately this ballet, but Kevin doesn't see the us or approve us, or, you know, or mm. ballet masters didn't see, or we're not choice of the ballet masters. So everybody has their own muses, you know, or vision who he want to see in the ballet. So it's a conversation. Sometimes it could be tough, but uh, in the end, we try to find the right uh, answer to, to achieve what we want. And what ballet would you love to do that you haven't done? What choreographer would you um, like to work with? Well, uh, upcoming mid season, I think it's going to be a ballet by John Neumeyer, Dame de Camille. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a musical Chopin. And I was always wanted to do this ballet. And uh, somehow, originally, I wasn't scheduled to do it. And I was really angry and pushy. And I said, I, I'm leaving this season only for this ballet. It, it's such a wonderful ballet. I really want to do it. And um, I think Kevin was generous enough and he spoke with the ballet masters and he explained the situation and everything. And uh, I ended up that I'm, I will have uh, two performances uh, at coming mid-season, I think. And for Maxim, he recently did Allegro Brillante. It was really no, my wonderful. My story is a little different. I'm pretty much almost fried, you know. <laughs> I, um, um, I've done so much that I'm in a position uh, now that I really, really have to be selective. and. Uh, I'm not jumping just on a, any opportunity mm -hmm. as I used to do before. Mm -hmm. uh, the music needs to be number one inspiration for me. Then uh, the language that I see, the, the way choreographer sees me in a ballet, the way he's going to use my personality and my body. Can you explain that to me? What does that um, mean? It means that uh, when, uh, let's say we, we meet you, choreographer, I'm a dancer. You have an idea for ballet for me let's say uh, one person ballet. So we sit down, we talk, I said, well, choice of music. You telling me, I don't know, uh, Rachmaninov, uh, I don't know, Shostakovich, uh, I would say Prokofiev. So I would immediately illuminate some of them and I said, well, I'm, I'm happy with that one. Mm -hmm. We go, okay, fine. Um, story behind this mini ballet, how you see, what you want from me, why me? Mm -hmm. and. What is it behind the... Um, well, I need a little scenario. Idea. 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 Why, why me and w what we're going to do in studio. So usually this is a little... It could be abstract, but even behind the abstract, it, it's the idea of you into the music or you in, in, in your thoughts or it's my thoughts or it's my, my suffering, my love, my... So because without idea, you become a robot. It's just an athletic, it's just something that body, arms moving, legs moving, you jump and turning, but you, your heart is not involved. So it's assumed that you can physically do the part. That's not the issue. You, well, physically, yes. What, so there's more to ballet than just the physicality. There's well, much more, they, yes. they are There are choreographers that for them the idea is a main thing. There are choreographers that the visual aspect, the lining, the position, the graphics, the, um, the, the lighting, the music, and complete abstract. Mm -hmm. So basically using my body as an instrument. Mm -hmm. But my heart is not touched by, by that. I just become a sponge for, for somebody.